yourselves comfortable. Come, we will take you all on an incredible journey through the history of our great nation. See for yourselves the huge changes we've experienced. Disease in our blood habit. Our people have made a living along these shores for more than 7,000 years, gathering shellfish, catching fish, and diving for pearls. Our hearts beat to the rhythm of the sea. These waters contain a wealth of the finest fish, sea bream, tuna, and hamur. Our forefathers made their nets and fish traps from woven palm leaves. Their boats were made of palm sticks bound together with rope. Sudden storms and high winds meant that fishing was dangerous but rewarding work. Fish that wasn't eaten immediately was hung up to dry or preserved in salt. Some of it we ate, and some we exchanged with traders for other things like tea and rice. Most of our homes were Irish, made of dead palm sticks and mats, although some were built with materials from the seashore, coral stone and lime cement. The walls reflected the heat of the sun. Inside, the rooms stayed cooler in the midday heat. Camels hold a special place in our hearts. We honor these loyal and noble creatures which can endure the blazing desert heat for days without food or water. They are a vital source of meat and milk. Their dung is used as fuel, their hair to eat tents, rocks and bags, their leather to make straps and sandals. The camel is truly a gift of God, perfectly adapted to life in the desert. These camels have been loaded with dates, dried fish, household goods and food. They used to cover huge distances to reach the oases inland at Liwa and Al Ain along routes that camels have traveled for generations. Camel trains carried wood, charcoal, food and fodder back and forth between the coast and the inland oases, bringing much needed supplies. They also transported whole families every year from the coast to the oases to escape the worst of the summer humidity. This is what makes camels happy. In the desert, they can smell water from many miles. This oasis is fed by cool underground springs and a network of fires, man-made channels which bring water from the mountains. Here, we produce dates, cereals, vegetables, fruit and fruit. It's a kind of paradise, cool and tranquil. At night, the birds settle in the safety of the trees and you have to keep a watchful eye for the snakes and scorpions. The camel raising bedbeds were nomadic during the months of good grazing and would settle around the oasis wells in the summer. Many would live in traditional desert tents made of woven cloth. These were furnished with rocks and divided into separate quarters for men and women. Here, in the food preparation area, women with cauldrons and bread making pans to make a family meal. <laughs> Next door, in the mistress, the men's quarters, the men would meet in the evening to talk and drink coffee. Our ancestors began to settle here more than 5,000 years ago, and they made the most of the world around them. Copper mining was one of the earliest industries here. Miners hammered away at rocks with handmade tools to uncover seams of copper ore in the mountains. 
sometimes they would use fire to crack a rock face. It was a dark, dangerous place to work. Once mined, the copper ore was heated to separate the copper from the ore, a process known as smelting. Molten liquid copper was poured into molds to make tools, weapons, and jewelry. Once the casts had cooled, they were hammered into shape. Settle down, please, children. Turn to page 17. Can anybody tell me what they see here? See, sir. Ahmed? The man is diving for pearls. My great grandfather was a pearl diver. He could hold his breath for ages. He taught me to swim and dive. One day, I'd like to be a diver too. I told you, Ahmed, the seas in our blood. In the last century, huge fleets of pearling vessels set out from Abu Dhabi every summer. The departure of the fleet was a major event. Families left behind were anxious about their loved ones. Some of the men never returned. The divers were weighted down as they plunged to the shallow banks to search for oysters. It was a dangerous job. With stinging jellyfish, sharp corals, and no breathing equipment. But a little time might establish a family's fortune. To keep their spirits up, the Nihan would chant to inspire the pearls, leading them all in songs which marked each stage of their work. Since oil was discovered in the Emirates more than 40 years ago, Abu Dhabi has become one of the world's major oil companies. Much of this oil comes from under the sea. A network of offshore drilling platforms. That's what I would like to be when I grow up, Grandpa. A diver. A bit like your father. The underwater pipelines are maintained by highly skilled commercial divers. They wear protective suits and dive to the seafloor to work on the pipes, moving through the murky waters amongst the fishes and creatures of the sea. It is hard, skilled work on the oil drilling platforms. Highly trained men operate the drills, pumps, and other heavy machinery, extracting crude oil from beneath the sea. Futuristic structures are oil production facilities. Huge quantities of oil are produced every day at offshore and onshore production facilities. But even this modern industry was built using traditional skills. Pearl divers helped to lay the undersea pipes, and dows kept fresh supplies coming in. Nowadays, massive tankers are needed to transport the oil and gas to the rest of the world. Abu Dhabi today is an emirate to be proud of. There is so much to do in this dynamic, lively capital. Busy streets, shopping malls, markets, hotels, a fantastic waterfront, beautiful mosques, magnificent mountains and parks. In little over a generation, Abu Dhabi has been transformed into one of the great trading and business centers of the world. This is now a thriving cosmopolitan city with a proud heritage rooted in the traditions and values of its desert and sea-going origins.